this video, we're going to look at the acoustic properties that are visible on speech waveforms, spectrograms, and spectra. The questions are, what can you see in each kind of visualization that you might not be able to see on the others? So let's start with the waveform. On here, we can see that our waveform shows a bunch of different blobs here. It's not really uh, easy to tell the difference between them unless we listen to them, and this just turns out to be vowels in isolation. E, I, A, E, A. Okay, so we have just a bunch of vowels, and what we can see on the waveform are a few things that are useful. So, for example, I can click and drag this to see the duration of this, which turns out to be about 450 milliseconds, and the duration of this vowel over here is quite a bit shorter, more like 230 milliseconds. I can also tell on the waveform that the second vowel has less intensity than the first vowel because it has uh, less of an excursion away from the center line. If I zoom into this, I can also see that this vowel is periodic, so I can see a systematic, regular repeating pattern in the waveform, um, which is evidence that this is voiced and has a pitch to it. There's not a whole lot else we can tell from the waveform because as you can see if we look at these vowels side by side, it's not really um, immediately obvious that these would be pronounced as different sounds. Sure, one is looks like it's softer than the other, but it's not easily um, uh, recoverable just from the waveform exactly what vowel we're looking at. And even though I've been looking at this for quite, quite a few years now, um, I can't just look at a waveform and tell you what vowel it is. We actually have to listen to it. Uh. Or Alternatively, we can turn on the spectrogram. So in Prot, if you don't have the spectrogram already visible, you can go up to Spectrum, Show Spectrogram, and right now we don't see anything because the duration of our sound is more than 10 seconds long. So what I need to do is select some sounds and then press this SEL button to zoom into that selection. Now we see on the spectrogram uh, there are a few things. So we can see time just as before. So if we go back to that vowel comparison we had a moment ago, just as we saw in the waveform that this is longer, we can also see on the spectrogram that it's longer. Um, so that element of time is visible um, just as well in the spectrogram. But now we can actually see the frequency content, and we can see that the frequencies in this first vowel, A, are much different than the second vowel. Okay, so we can see those formants. Um, we can tell Prat to actually show us where the formants are, but that's really just an ornament on top of the spectrogram and not part of the spectrogram itself. An important part of the spectrogram, which we can see in this vowel here, is that the frequency content could still change over time. So for example, this formant frequency starts at around 1971 hertz, and then it moves upward in frequency um, to a frequency that's close to 2200. So although it looks subtle on the screen, um, this change in frequency content over time is something that we want to look at only on a spectrogram. Another example of that change over time we can see in a much simpler sound, just consisting of two sine tones. It sounds like this. So we have a first tone, which is about 500 hertz. Second tone is around 3000 hertz. And we can see that change very clearly on the spectrogram, but on the waveform, uh, we would not be able to tell that. If we zoom into the waveform right at that boundary between the sounds, we can see that there's a difference, namely that the changes occur at a much slower rate on the left side for the lower frequency, at a much faster rate for the higher frequency sound. Speech is a lot more complicated than this sequence of sine tones, but there's still some pretty good examples um, that we can see here. So on the waveform, what we have uh, on the first part of this syllable is an aperiodic sound. It just sounds like noise. Okay, and then the second part is this periodic sound with the vowel E. C. Okay, so together we'd have the word C. C. And we can see both parts on the waveform, but we can't see both parts in the spectrogram. And the reason for this is that the spectrogram only shows us frequencies between 0 and 4000 hertz, and the energy content in this person's S sound turns out to be all above 4000 hertz. So I'm going to go to the spectrogram settings, and where it says 4000, I'm going to make that go up to 8000. And now we can see that there's actually energy visible up there. So one of the things we can do with uh, the spectrogram is see the difference in frequency content as it changes over time, and as it can change pretty dramatically between phonetic segments. Now we want to think about what we can view on a spectrum. So 
for a segment like this where we have the word sock, sock. What we want to think about on the spectrum is what is the frequency content of any of these segments. So for example, in the mid part of the ah vowel, I can select that portion and tell Prot to give me a spectral slice. So I've selected spectrum, view spectral slice, and now I have a spectrum on the screen. So there are a few things to do as soon as the spectrum comes up. One is to think about what frequency range we're viewing. We're viewing from 0 to 22,050 hertz. And we really only need to be focusing on some of the lower frequencies. So I'm going to highlight those. And just the way we can zoom in on a waveform, we can also zoom in on a spectrum. So now we're viewing from 0 up to just under 5,000 hertz. And we can see some of the content here in much more detail than we saw um, on the spectrogram. So for example, we can see individuated harmonics. OK, and we can see exactly what frequencies they are. In fact, if we were really detail-oriented, we can zoom way in to these first four harmonics and get exactly the frequency peak of each of these. OK, I'm going to zoom back out. Now, um, another thing we can get a sense of on the spectrum is the location of the formant frequencies. And so, for example, right in this region, we can see that these components are sticking out above the rest, and that we see the same thing over here. And again, we see here, this harmonic is sticking out above the rest, as well as this one here. So we have the first, second, third, and fourth harmonics visible on the spectrum. One thing that you won't see is the element of time. So the spectrum doesn't tell us how long this stretch of sound lasted. So to go um, recover that information, we actually have to go back to the waveform or the spectrogram. Now the spectrum is going to look a lot different for this S sound here. If we view the spectrum of that, again, we first want to say um, we're viewing from 0 to 22,050 hertz. And again, we want to zoom back in to the, the relevant range that we're interested in, let's say between 0 and just under 8,000 in this case. And we have a lot of high frequency energy um, on the spectrum. So the spectrum shows us what frequencies are more loud or soft than the others. Um, and it can show us harmonics if they're actually in the signal. But it doesn't show us um, how long the signal lasted or which components came before the others. So that being said, it wouldn't be a good idea to make a spectrum over this whole sound. Because if we did, we'd get a combination of the spectrum for ah and for s. So you can see some components of the ah down here where we have those harmonics. But we also see, as we zoom out, a lot of this high frequency energy, which was really only there in the S sound. So the problem in the spectrum is that it shows us the frequency components, but not the order in which they appeared in the waveform. So in this word, this section over here, the high frequency components, S, happened before the low frequency components, but the spectrum doesn't tell us that. So the spectrum tell us, tells us the frequency, but not the time. Now, in going back to our spectrogram for a moment here, um, an interesting component of this sound sock is this stretch right here, which comes after the ah and before the k sound. But this stretch of time that's nearly silent is actually an integral part of the k sound. Um, and so what we can see on the waveform and on the spectrogram is that the sound basically goes away here. And so both the waveform and spectrogram can show us the very simple difference between the presence and the absence of sound. One of the features of Prot, which is sometimes helpful and sometimes distracting, is that the um, extent of the intensity uh, will actually be scaled to fill the window. And what I mean by that is that the upper and lower limits of the window of the waveform encapsulate the whole sound and there's no extra white space. So this k part right here looks like it's pretty soft compared to the rest of the sound. But if I only zoom into that section, it will now fill the whole window top to bottom. And so what this means is um, you have to be mindful of the, the y-axis limits of your waveform just to make sure you don't get the wrong sense of how loud different components are. A more extreme example of this would be to zoom into this part, which is mostly silent. So remember on here, this is very much softer than the vowel. But if we zoom into this part, suddenly it looks like it's filling up the whole screen. And so just to recap, what we can see on each 
kind of visualization of speech, the waveform shows us the duration, relative amplitude, um, changes in amplitude over time. We can see periodicity. We can see whether or not there's even a sound there, but it's not easy to see frequency content on a waveform unless you zoom in um, to a really small scale. And even then, it's pretty difficult to tell uh, really what frequencies are there. Um, the frequency content, however, is on a spectrum in a high amount of detail where you can see harmonics and vowel formants, but the limitation of the spectrum is that we don't see anything about time or changes or duration uh, of segments. For that, we actually need to look at the spectrogram where we can see duration, we can see the frequency content and how it changes over time, including how the formants change over time, and we can see simple things like whether or not there's a sound even there.